One of the reasons building a camper van can be so difficult is because you're dealing with all sorts of curves and cutouts in a small space. Nothing in a van is squared off, and the ceiling is no exception. The reason we picked this L5H3 Fiat Ducato is because of its wide body and exceptionally high roof. But this high roof can quickly disappear if the frame along the ceiling isn't custom shaped. Pretty nasty job to sign this in, but at least I'm able to keep the ceiling this much higher because normally I would have to lower down whole ceiling panel just because of this one fan. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to follow along with this absurdly detailed van build. Oh gosh, there's another one of you. I want to have the nicest curve on the ceiling, copy exactly the chassis of the van. Sorry, I forgot the word. Knar. I've never used it before and I'm a cabinet maker. So I had to find a wood with no knar to make it easy to bend, thin. I'm gonna probably do three layers and I need to process it and make thinner strips 55 mil long. Let's see if I can do it in less than 40 minutes. Wow, isn't this beautiful piece of wood a single cut sheet? This is so cool. Lottie is doing all of this to create four main attachments to frame the ceiling. The roof of our van is not completely flat, but has a bit of a curve to it. By making these custom attachments, we'll be able to utilize every centimeter of the ceiling space, and that will give us as much headroom as possible. This will also keep our attachment frame really tight against the body of the van. Huh. Look what I found next door. This is a template I had for my first van to glue the ceiling on. Pretty good fit. Still fits the same curve like this H3. This mold that was used in our last van is going to help bend our new attachments to the exact curve of the van ceiling. The wood is much easier to bend when it is thinner, so each attachment has multiple layers of thin wood that are being glued together. Then all of the glued layers are clamped down to mimic the shape of the mold. These need to be left overnight, so when the glue dries, the wood has all bent together. This is one, two, and I'm gonna do second glue, same part, for another two strips. Making four of them separately would be very time consuming. On the other hand, making only f one single strip and ripping four of them out of it, that would be much more trickier to bend. While making this video, we also kicked off a massive renovation next door, adding an entire new extension to the workshop. We're calling this the barn. This space housed a massive saw that was used for the lumber production, but now that business is ending and we'll be officially taking over the entire land. This massive barn will not only be large enough for our van and our Audi to be parked inside, but on top of that house, two CNC machines. We're interested in having one router and one laser cutter. Let us know if you're in the CNC business and would want to collaborate. We hope this whole barn renovation will be done, painted, and ready for us to move in before this winter is over. And to clarify, this is not our secret project. That is at a whole different battleground.
it's just so heavy. That's the only mistake. That was supposed to be bamboo. But wow, that's what I don't have in stock. <clears throat> that needs to change. Okay, what do I do about this now? Uh, I think I'm gonna just take some of the material out to make it lighter. Let's see, I'm very curious. Okay. Seven and right four. Seven point seven. That was pretty cool. I seriously felt every single pass <laughs> how it was getting lighter and lighter. This if this makes two kilos difference, that would be two kilos there, two kilos there, and right away saving 30 kilos. Very satisfying. Now the question is, how much did we save? 5.9, that's amazing. That's almost two kilos. My four layer laminated wood definitely needs to be mechanically attached to the chassis of the car. So I'm going to do three rivet nuts, screw it to the chassis, and then just screw the panel straight to the wood itself. All of these spots along the ceiling where you see exposed metal are where those wooden attachments are going. So now Lottie is prepping some holes in the metal itself so that we can attach the wooden framing to the body of the van. Dry fit time. This looks pretty impressive. I'm not gonna even glue it. I'm gonna just use Loctite. So anytime if I just in case need to, I can take it on. What's up? I really like the dark ceilings. That was probably for the first time when I noticed when we bought that Audi S5 S-Line. And I knew big deal with the S-Line is a black ceiling inside. And then when I actually saw the original car with no S-Line, that's when it hit me how much cooler dark ceiling is. You know, it makes it cozier. It makes it more stylish, more like a cave. But obviously people have a big argument that the light panels reflect more light, so you have brighter, more open-like van. We like the KV type of a style. <laughs> Plus we have this massive benefit, which is two of these panorama windows that always, no matter what the light is outside, it always shoots in natural light. That's what makes really, really good interiors. See what I mean? I love it. It's like a cockpit. It's like a futuristic cockpit. Now Lottie is adding a few strips of the 6 mil K-Flex over the body of the van. This insulation will be sandwiched between the new wooden frame attachments and the chassis itself. Another important reason we decided to do this is because this material also acts as a vapor barrier. Tight. Look tight and the whole thing I can take down 
if I need to run a wire or whatever reason I, I, I might have in the future. It's cool. It's tight, it's sealed, it's insulated. I love it. You can see from these shots how absolutely perfect these attachments fit along the curves of the van. The ends are trimmed at the corners, the material is lightweight and sturdy, and the profile is as thin as it can be so we don't lose much space above our heads. You're gonna show off? Ciao. Oh, up she goes. That's high, Melinoosh. <laughs> My little climber. Oh, that's nice up there, isn't it? Buddy's brother. Oh, hi. Melinoosh. See how the master does it. Come on. Nice. There you go. Nice. Good, <laughs> Millie. If you watched our previous video, you witnessed the creation of these plastic covers for our panorama roof windows. Now they are being primed and painted so they perfectly match the vent windows that are already installed. Okay with this. That ties all of this together, and then we have a neat framing. So this will be my structure for the ceiling. This is all gonna hold on these L brackets and uh, rivet nuts all screwed, so always three points of contact. All of these will be right here. Every single one is custom tailored. It is incredible. These will be holding my slides forerunners. This will be another additional framing for the magnets. It's pretty complicated but I'm on my way there. Maddie's dad started calling her Mitzi. I know. Hi. You too scared to come out? Come on. Come here. Come here, there it is. Uh, I know, Ahoy. Every day a new beginning. Every day remembering that it's okay to be touched. There's the fur. Hi. Thank you so much for watching today's video and supporting our channel. We'll see you next week as we continue on our ultimate tiny home build. Have a great week!